Hello. MicroLive this month features one of the most useful applications for the home micro. And for that matter, the business micro. Word processing. With me are four people who regularly use a typewriter professionally, but have never touched a word processor before. So seated at four home micros are Katie Steele, who's Hello. a secretary, using the BBC micro. Hello, Kate. Hello. John Humphreys, familiar. Changed from reading the news this, John. A bit of a difference. She's <laughs> with an Atari 800XL. And Bernard, Bernard Adams, who is a television producer with the Commodore 64. Welcome, Bernard. Hello. And finally, writer Jill Tweedy, who's using a... What is it? Sinclair, Sinclair. QL. Yes. Right. No experience at all with no. microsync. No. It's going to be very exciting for you. Okay. Well, they've got about three quarters of an hour to see if they can learn enough to be able to copy this letter and print it out and make some changes to it. Well, usually the manuals are pretty daunting. So we've asked the manufacturers to boil down the basics onto just one sheet of paper. John Cole, welcome John Cole. He's here to see fair play and to give them the maximum time we're setting them going now, before the show really starts. Well, I can hear a lot of rattling from our amateur word processors as they clatter away there. We'll see how they're getting on in a minute or two. But first of all, I thought we might look at a few of the principles involved. Typing letter out using an ordinary typewriter is fine until you realise you've made a mistake. And we've got a representation of a typewriter here and a piece of paper as it clatters across the screen. And there it goes. That's rather nice. This is part of a software package by the BBC Radio for Schools called Computers at Work. And it links an audio cassette here with the actual software on the micro itself. Well, we can see from this letter we've got two mistakes here. One is a hoppy instead of a happy. And we've got some fiends here instead of friends. That's the letter missed out. Now, all we have to do is to set this thing going and at the same time set the... the now, tape if you have an ordinary typewriter, you'd need to rub out or paint over the O in hoppy and type in A. Then you'd have to rub out A on the line after the F of fiend to make space for the new letter, the letter R. And then retype the whole line. Oh, thank you very much, Fred. That's very nice. But of course, you might want to put this paragraph here. We'd all like to wish you a happy birthday right at the end of the letter. And that means you'd have to retype the whole letter once again. Now, let's look at how a word processor would handle it. And this is part of the same package. And we can see here, exactly the same letter, we've got the mistake in the hoppy, we've got the mistake in the fiends. And, the, and our word processor would look something like this. The O would be eliminated and replaced with an A. An R will be inserted and automatically the line will be pushed along. The paragraph we want to move will be marked and it would instantly be moved. Of course, if I was actually doing it myself, well, it wouldn't be as fast as that. Well, when you're absolutely pleased with the results that you've got here, you just type it out and put a letter on some sort of printer. So let's see how our guinea pigs are getting on. John, are they hitting any problems? <laughs> oh, one or two, yes. It's quite interesting, actually. One or two, as we'll see in a minute, have found it almost impossible to get going. But once they've got going, uh, they've managed quite well. It's interesting, actually, Kate here has managed uh, really quite well. And we've got the text in on the screen with quite a lot of success. Yeah. What problems have you found, Kate? I haven't found many at all. I had difficulty centering the yours sincere. I'm not quite sure how to do it. But you I've... found out how to correct the errors? Oh, yes, yeah. Would you yeah. know how to make the letter narrower, for example? <laughs> I haven't looked into it that far yet. <laughs> Were the instructions good enough just yes, to get yeah, you going? Yeah, they're fine, yes. How right. about you, John? Are you going to use a disaster? Disaster. A disaster. Disaster. total 100 <laughs> An unrelieved disaster. In fact, if John hadn't been here to help, we cheated. If he hadn't been here, well, he'd still been looking at blank I, I advise him not to give up his daytime job. I, <laughs> I did not understand any of the instructions. It wouldn't do anything I wanted it to do. Total shambles. Fair enough. You are winning now, aren't you? I don't think so. I mean, it's, uh, I'm trying to do the last bit of it, and it keeps sort of stealing bits from here. And I was hearing a lot Ooh. of clattering and clacking going well, on. Well, I'm a, a two-finger you... typist. I type very fast and very inaccurately with two fingers, and I like old underwoods you know, was... that you can hammer. And... Certainly. <laughs> I mean, do you I, think it's a fault in the package itself, or do you think it's the instructions? In no, actually, the, <laughs> I, I didn't understand. I couldn't get it started at all. So I think, even though I'm not very bright, there must have been... Come back to you <laughs> later. And we'll be back again towards the end of the show to see their final results. Our word processing challenge is progressing. John, 
How's it going? How's everybody? What's the overview? Uh, the overview is good in parts. I mean, some people have managed very easily, and others have really, um, sorry, John, have got disasters. <laughs> Kate, what's your impression? <laughs> what have you found that's good and what's bad? Well, I've had a bit of a problem here with the pound signs. They came up on the screen, but when I printed it out, it didn't register at all. That's a serious lesson to learn, that you better make sure that the, the, the characters that you want to print out are actually on the printer that you buy. <laughs> some do have dollar signs instead of pound signs and yeah. so on. This one, I think, has been really amazing amazingly easy and very much one of the most successful ones, it's, it's view on the bead machine. But your secretary, that I think has made it easier. And also, on the screen, you've been able to see exactly what the printout's going to look like. So mm -hmm. it makes it relatively easy and, and, you know, Kate's obviously found that a great help. In the sense that the, you can see all the full width of the letter on the screen yes. because it's an 80 yes. character screen. That's the difference between 80 and 40 characters, yes. I guess. Compare, um, we, we've had them. <laughs> John. <laughs> John, how's it going? Well, <laughs> thank you for I your had, inquiries. If I had, thank you, if I had to write my stories for the nine o'clock news on this particular machine, it would get on the air if we were lucky by midnight, <laughs> two years later. I have a copy, I have in my hand a piece of paper, I have a copy um, of, of, uh, of something that I produced, but as you can see, if you're looking, it's a shambles, it's full of mistakes, and it would never have been created at all if John here had What was the difficulties you found? Was it with the instructions? I couldn't understand the instructions. Well, I mean, I did what they told me to do, and it didn't seem to work. And I think John would agree with me that even when he tried it himself, it wasn't, uh, you had to know something about computers to know, and I know nothing about computers. I bought a BBC B a year ago, and I've never actually used it, because I was afraid of it after I got it at home. And it, in fact, you used a phrase at one stage, John, you said, uh, we're not in control. And I thought, my God, I've never not been in control of a typewriter before. And I just wasn't, I didn't know how to make it go. Thank you, John. Well, the best of luck. I hope you'll persevere and come no, out with the I'll news one, Bernard. I'm going back to a 1912 Underwood. <laughs> Bernard, how have you found the Commodore 64? Well, I'm the sort of person that has the odd problem problem with uh, soup packets, understanding the instructions on soup packets, so this has proved a bit of a challenge. Uh, by and large, though, I've managed to type the second half of the letter fairly wrongly, otherwise I've done splendidly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we did get a printout there, fair enough, and, and in fact it's not bad. The worst problem here was just getting going, and it was a I've good ten minutes or so before the you know, we'd begun to get into the thing at all. I think now, now you're into it, so you could probably yes. make it work. I think, I think starting is the problem, and after that, the fact that the fingers don't do what they're supposed to do is another factor. In other words, bad typing as well as all, as well. Well, of course, as it's meant to aid bad typing by being able to rapidly correct some of the mistakes. Did you find the sheet of paper given enough instructions it to was, use it? It was opaque to me. The instructions were <laughs> not, not, not easily, <laughs> easily understood. And one of the understood. phrase that was used earlier, but... And uh, <laughs> the keyboard is difficult as well uh, in terms of touch. Otherwise... Do you think you'd have been better off reading a full manual? I think it would have been better to have started at the beginning and have the whole book. Yeah. So you can't just plunge into it and, I, and just I think have it's a asking a lot. I think it needs a slow beginning, otherwise panic sets in pretty quickly. You see, again, this one here, uh, you don't have on the screen the same output as you're going to get on the printer. And that's incredibly off-putting for, for beginning users. In rehearsals we had exactly the same problem, that um, users for the first time really want to see on the screen what was going to come out on the printer. So this really isn't a machine you would necessarily buy for word processing. Well, not this particular no. piece of software. So you could use word processing on it if you had it, but not right. use it. Right. Jill, how have you come on? Are you a good I've typist? I've got typing here. Yes. Oh yes, that's not bad at all, is it? I knew how In to tear fact. this paper off. I will tear it off. Right, here and we've got the, we spectra, uh, the QL with uh, the Quill software. And on the screen, pretty much, uh, is what you get on output, on, on the printout. So it hasn't been too bad, really, has it? Well, it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this, first of all, I'm not used to a flat keyboard like that, so I'm going like that. I'm, I'm used to this up, upward thing. Right. Um, I type faster than it comes out here, which I find very bewildering, because I'm, I'm used to watching as I type. I'm a touch typist. And as I type, it hasn't happened yet. Right. And That's that, very strange, because it's quite a powerful machine, is that? Why is it, that, John? It is indeed. Uh, it's just the way they've got type ahead, they call it, so it allows you to type ahead, but you do find it uh, very difficult at first. Although it's fair to say some electric typewriters have the same facility. Yes, they do. Yes. I've got one of them that I don't use. use. It? <laughs> it yeah. is. How do yes. you find the error correction and so on? Would that well, be I've been trying to get rid of that E for the last 
<laughs> ten yeah. minutes. I cannot do it. And that is one of the terrible things, I think, that you feel completely frustrated. You look, you try, and nothing happens. Mm. With a manual thing, which I'm used to, you're, you're able to do something about it, if only to take out a screwdriver. Yes. One, one of the things that everybody's commented on, in fact, is that they didn't know how to delete things, and they got quite worried when they found things on the screen they couldn't cope with. Now, of course, once you show people, it's quite easy the second time. We had another problem here, and that was that uh, the screen, the text on the screen, was centred all the time. We got into a mode. Hello. Hi. Oh, yeah, I'm just eavesdropping here. Right. <laughs> we got into a mode where everything was centred in the line, and we couldn't find an easy yes, way out. that's right. Okay. Yeah. After we'd solved the problem, it was all right, but, but it was off putting it first. Well, yes, mm. but I pressed the help button, and uh, up came they sent a great deal of words, um, and I didn't know that you had to say, um, enter again. It does not say... I'm sure you have to sit on the problem that I found, going straight into word processing, no knowledge of yes. computers. Yes. Perhaps really they should say... We didn't, allow you, we didn't allow you to look at the manual at all, so yes. we made it really very difficult. Yeah, right. Our next programme comes live from British Telecom's Research Centre at Martlesham Heath. So be looking out for us on the 8th of February. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.